Hello and welcome back to ARBC Summit YouTube channel. We're here to bring you news on all things blockchain and crypto. So if you are a fan of the space or you're looking to learn that a little bit more, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe. Now joining me, I have Felix Mago from co-founder of Dash Next, and we'll be taking a look at the need for DAOs in a post-COVID world. So Felix, it's great to talk to you today. Thank you for having me again, Jessica. Always a pleasure. Always great to catch up and it's always great to hear what you've been, what's been going on. And since we've last spoke, we caught up in November at our previous AIBC summit in Malta. And since then, we have seen the world change just a little bit. We've seen COVID actually completely rattle 2020. And I think what's a really interesting conversation is looking at how this could actually help develop the world of DAOs and make them more essential in the space. And I want to get your impressions on this. Obviously, COVID has made life difficult for so many people. It's very tough for the economy, very tough for many people uh, to get jobs or to lose their jobs. In fact, I know many people who really struggle right now, you know, being independent, being uh, an entrepreneur, running a restaurant, a bar or anything, you know, and it's, it's, it's really tough. So what I have to say for the blockchain world, I didn't feel any difference, you know, because for us, the world was completely digital before. Every meeting we had was like that already, you know, it's like it's completely normal to talk on Zoom. And in fact, I, I think I have like 20 messengers on my telephone, you know. So for us, it's obviously not a switch at all to go completely digital, to not need an office. You know, it's, I can work from everywhere. I have my notebook. It doesn't it doesn't make any difference. So what COVID showed us definitely was that. I mean, if there's an urge, you can do it, right? So every, even big corporations like the, the uh, I don't know, big automotive corporations or big banks, suddenly Zoom meetings are possible and that stuff uh, is going on, you know? So uh, in that sense, it's very interesting to see that. And I think, you know, now suddenly people are looking into the blockchain world and looking into these digital native uh, uh, work environments and figure, hey, we can actually learn from them. You know, and this is exactly what I think uh, is interesting to talk about. And we are here to talk about today about DAOs and decentralized autonomous organizations. So this is probably even the next level of, of being digital. And I hope we can elaborate a bit on that. And you've made some excellent points there, because when we do look at this kind of catalyst that has been COVID-19 and this revamp and this move into digitalization, things being autonomous, people are communicating not in person, but over the Internet and over calls. It does actually move and make more steps towards what we can consider to be this digital economy that people in the blockchain space have kind of been advocating for for several years now. For people that aren't necessarily in the blockchain space, maybe you can just give an introduction into what a DAO is and why it's essential in, in the world. It's a very abstract concept still, but what a DAO is essentially is if you, uh, to put it very simple, it's organization run by code as much as possible. That means you put core processes um, in a digital way and you completely try to automate your organization. That doesn't mean we run or we have organizations that are completely in the internet or that are completely without people, but it's, it's essentially taking the next, next step of taking an organization and, and trying to, you know, to, to, to put bits and pieces into the internet as possible. So that's like a very abstract level. And usually when I, when I start with that, uh, people have no relation to actually what it is, right? So let's try it from a different angle and let's maybe try to talk a little bit about like what is the evolution of organizations we have seen since we actually have the internet. You know, before obviously an organization without the internet, we were using fax machines and <laughs> telephones and everything was paper-based. Suddenly the internet came and more and more there was a transition of um, of including business processes in a digital way, right? And up to this point, still, we are very much struggling to do this conversion. i uh, give you an example. I was uh, consulting a bank to do an, a, a credit process online. So people who are asking for a loan, what is happening there? You, you write them an email, then they will print out something, send it back to you. You have to sign it, send it back to the bank. And this is like many processes still work like that, right? So... This actually is kind of a running gag already because you know we are in a digital economy and stuff doesn't need to be on paper anymore, yet we are still struggling with it, right? So now, for the last couple of years, everybody was suddenly talking about the platform economy, right? Suddenly, like companies like uh, uh, Uber, Airbnb, uh, um, or Amazon came in, right? And they essentially have a business model to say, we 
open or we have a platform and you can sell your services there. You can register yourself as a driver or you can register your room there, right? Yet, we very much rely on uh, what these companies decide, right? So is Uber even available in, in your country? Is it even allowed in your country, right? What does Airbnb uh, allow you to do? How much charge do they take, right? So we kind of got used to this platform economy. And I think now what happens is that people found already kind of, or they created already a new kind of job, which is like an Uber driver that actually is doesn't need an employer in the old sense anymore, right? So what the DAO is essentially doing now to you now convert to, or, or to have a little bit of relation is um, you actually can build now an Uber without having a centralized entity that is Uber and that's, you know, and you, you rely on what, what they want, what they decide on. So in that sense, I think it's really the next level of organizations because, you know, you can now build organizations that do not need a local entity anymore, that are really purely run in the internet, let's say, right? You don't need to have them anywhere. You don't need physical offices anymore. Uh, anymore. You, you know, you can uh, automate a lot of stuff within and, and you can decentralize now also the core elements that, you know, to create kind of a fairer, uh, way to run these organizations and you can by doing that also distribute in a new way the incentives you have on these organizations because what happens in organizations is always there are always a model like this right on the top is the ceo and there is like the the c level and the the more you get down the less the salary the less the power and everything right and now imagine you can do a circular organization without any CEO. You don't need that, in fact, anymore, right? So what you can do is then also distribute what the guy on the top runs to all the levels down, right? So you can essentially design a new kind of organization where everybody profits more and therefore, you know, increases the incentives of uh, joining. And the incentives are certainly clear there, and I think that's what's such an interesting element to this discussion is that actually we are seeing that this is already something which is kind of, it's being understood, and it's just about introducing that in a way that is implemented to people that are uh, working in the workforce and that are able to move forward. When we look at 2020 and what digital processes have already been built, what kind of uh, examples maybe have you come across in your line of work, Felix? What I'm seeing is that more and more DAOs are popping up for to, to deal with, with different problems. Um, I mean, I am working for Dash, right? You, you introduced me as the co-founder of, of, of Dash Next. So this is one you know, one entity, or well, entity is probably also the wrong word, one part and one, we call it a, a, a sub-DAO within the big Dash DAO, right? So Dash is essentially one of the oldest running DAOs, even before we had the world, uh, the world DAO, but it was established in 2014 with the use case of saying we want to do crypto payments, right? And uh, uh, it's run in a way that everybody can apply for funding and say, hey, I want to be part of Dash. I want to do something for Dash. And I, I have an idea. I pitch it to the network. And uh, uh, if the network likes your idea, you know, you uh, uh, they grant you some funds to, to do what you want. And in this way, we have established teams all around the world, right? But this is just one use case for digital payments. There are so many out there. And actually, it's uh, your, uh, the limit is only your fantasy. What I'm seeing right now is many of them are popping up. What I've seen this year is the decentralized platforms to run virtual um, events, right? This is obviously a little bit of zeitgeist at the moment with uh, events being not possible anymore. Um, I have seen uh, uh, an incubation project, the decentralized incubation project, actually several of them. Um, in fact, the whole or the, 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 the first time we heard the word DAO was with the decentralized kind of venture capital fund. You uh, might remember that was the reason why we now have Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, um, because something failed in the code. And that is also a little bit of a risk in these kind of new organizations. And now, just finally to summarize, Felix, uh, since last time we spoke, we always discuss Dash and how Dash's progress is going. 2019 was such a huge year for Dash. Mm. There were some huge milestones that were met. Uh, and 2020, one of the main targets that was coming across was kind of onboarding of merchants and more of an adoption focus. So how's 2020 been for Dash so mm. far, Felix? So far, actually fantastic. And again, you know, I, uh, 
this Corona and COVID is really a big chance for us because suddenly digital payments are even uh, more normal than they used to be, right? It was like quite normal before, but now nobody wants to touch money <laughs> anymore because of germs or because of whatever is involved there. So uh, in in that regard, it was very good, but also we onboarded uh, a lot of new partners and a lot of cool stuff is coming up. So we're very much focusing um, on the remittance sector in the gaming industry. Some cool stuff will be announced within the next weeks. And we with Dash Next, in fact, have just launched uh, or uh, onboarded a new ambassador in the Philippines. So that's also a very, very interesting and important market because if, if you look at the market sizes, it's one of the biggest remittances markets in the world. Um, very international, a great community. So, and we are onboarding bit by bit uh, more partners there. The first merchants are there. We're going to have uh, Fiat Gateway soon, and from there. We have uh, also a fantastic partner in the education space, Unifinity. Um, yeah, where essentially everybody can pay their tuition fees soon with Dash. Fantastic. So it sounds like it's all steams ahead. Felix, thank you so much for sharing some of your insights today. And we really look forward to having you speak as one of our speakers for our AIBC Digital Conference in June. So thanks so much for your time today and we'll speak in June. Thank you very much, Jessica. That's all for myself and Felix. We'd love to hear how you found this interview. So share your thoughts in the comments below.